<laughs> they watched to the end of the video and were like, these two, hate them. <laughs> Bye-bye. Unsubscribe. <laughs> that idea in their head. you. Annyeonghaseyo, hey you. It's Natalia and today I'm doing a Q&A collab with my friend here. I am Abigail aka Polyglot Progress here on YouTube. Yes. And what languages are you studying, Abigail? <sighs> as much as I hate this I know. <laughs> uh, so I can speak French. I studied French in school and have a degree in French. Um, I'm conversational-ish in Italian, German, and Spanish, and I'm currently working on studying Bulgarian, in which I'm a very, very, very beginner. <laughs> so we asked you guys to submit like questions that you had about learning languages, so we're gonna answer a few today. And we did a part one slash part two uh, on Abigail's channel where we answered more questions, so if you don't see your question in this video, you can check out Abigail's video and maybe it was answered there. Maybe not, but let's hope for the, maybe it was. <laughs> There's a but. possibility. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go ahead and jump into your questions, so go, go. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready, I was waiting. <laughs> you were like, we're gonna jump into it, and I'm like, it's time. <laughs> so the first question was, how can you improve your writing, especially when you self-study? Ooh. I keep a journal. I don't necessarily just use it for journal entries. Like I will write about my day and my life and journaly things, mm -hmm. but I also will write like essays, like not actual like for school, for academic setting essays, yeah. but just like for myself. Um, Cause it helps with like learning transition words. And also mm -hmm. sometimes I'll pick a topic and then I have to learn vocabulary and yes. use that vocabulary. Like I've yes. written about random environmental things or like Mm -hmm. comparing my city to a city in another country or things like that yeah. so that way yeah. I can maybe also get some cultural elements um, yeah. I'll write about like books I read or movies I watch and stuff mm -hmm. uh, write about like literally anything uh, I would say right now the majority of my writing is through italki classes we'll read like a news article my song sing name and I and then I will write an essay on it like a summary and then mm -hmm. my opinion so it's not like really long that's often what like mine is too yeah. three-fourths of a page probably yeah and it helps a lot um, and especially like since I'm at the intermediate level a lot of the grammar that's presented in my textbooks is specifically for like essays or specifically mm -hmm. for written Korean mm -hmm. so I'm able to like use those and that improves my writing a lot yeah. because before um, like those journal entries that I was writing two years ago or three years ago were they were written in speech like Korean like not speeches mm -hmm. and like presentation, mm -hmm. but like talking, mm -hmm. casual, yeah. colloquial. But that's not the kind of Korean that I would use. Like when I'm gonna yeah. write in Korean. Yeah. Like text messages, I've been able to write text messages for years. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. But in terms of like more academic stuff, I have a yeah. tutor for that. I really like Journaly, which is um, a website where you can mm -hmm. post like journal entries in your target oh. languages and then people can go and correct them. For me, when I just write like random things by myself, like not for italki or anything, mm -hmm. I will, like, if there's a sentence or a group of sentences that I'm not sure about, I will just post them to, like, Hello Talk. Yeah. In the moments tab and be like, can someone do you review this for me? Mm -hmm. And then they'll tell me if it's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So, if you're trying to, like, not spend money, then you can do it that way. What's a common beginner mistake you see? I think a lot of beginners focus on trying to find the best resource for whatever, mm, like, mm -hmm. best textbook or best reading resource or best method for learning yeah. vocab. Seems like instead of actually starting to study or just sitting down and studying, there's a mm -hmm. lot of, well, let me find the best book or the best method. Mm -hmm. Almost like a procrastination method. Yeah. You know, like, they, it's like I'm being productive, but I'm not yeah, being yeah, yeah, productive. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely actually agree with that. I wasn't sure what I was going to say, but I think like a huge thing is trying to figure out the perfect way or trying to plan too much and not mm, yeah. like actually acting on those plans. And I think it is sometimes because it's scary or you don't feel like you know enough yet, but like the way that you'll learn what works well for you is through trying different things and having some stuff really not work and having some stuff really work. And then I guess the other thing that is actually quite relevant to your channel is oh. not learning the writing system. Oh my goodness, yeah. I, I feel like a lot of people are very scared of writing systems and that's why people will say that certain languages are so hard, but yeah. like they're really not as scary as you would think. What would be the next language you would learn if you had to choose one? And then we got a similar question mm -hmm. that was, do you have plans on learning more languages in the future? So I definitely do. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And I know that my next language is going to be Japanese. Um, <laughs> I thought I was going to start studying Japanese this year. First I was like, January 1st, Japanese. 
And then end of 2020 came and I was like, no, I need to spend a lot, a lot, mm. a lot more time with Bulgarian. Um, I want to get it to at least a beginner intermediate level before I add another project. Um, and also at the start of this year, I was studying American Sign Language as well. I've kind of taken a break from that right now just because I started a new job. I'm a little yeah. stressed life-wise. Um, so like I knew that I didn't want to add on <laughs> more stuff. I do not have plans to learn an additional language. Um, but I don't even know if I could give one as if I had to choose one. Cause I feel like the next language that I would learn would be highly related to what my like career is after grad school. Because I know I've been looking at different positions like within Korea, like if I were to stay in Korea after grad school, mm -hmm. what is considered desirable? And a lot of them say like, we want someone that speaks Japanese or that speaks Chinese. Mm. They have certain like language requirements on top of just English and Korean. I see. So I yeah. think it would depend on what type of job I'm wanting and if they have a certain language that they want. How do you stay motivated when self-studying your target language? And just how do you stay motivated? I feel like my motivation comes more from discipline than actual motivation. Honestly, because I have my goal of mm -hmm. like, I want to go to grad school mm -hmm. in Korea. And so to me, if I take a month off, that's like pushing my goal out a month. Mm. Like that might be a toxic way to think about it. That could lead to burnout. But to me, I'm like, okay, if I want to go to grad school by the time I'm like 26, which I'm currently 25, then it's like, okay, and like, I need to learn. Maybe I don't have everything planned out, but I know like, okay, at least need to get to like, the average advanced, yeah, yeah, yeah. which even then that's, I don't think that's meant for grad school level mm -hmm. because based on mm -hmm. people that have done grad school in Korea and the, like my tutor or teacher, you should be above topic six, which is the highest level of the, on the yeah. proficiency test. I feel like I don't have like practical reasons mm -hmm. like that so much, but definitely I think a lot of the time it is like more of a discipline thing for me. Yeah. But the other thing, like if we're talking just like inspiration, motivation, I think, I get motivated like watching other language oh, YouTubers yeah. and hearing about their progress or just watching them study or talk about things. Um, and also, I guess, I guess this is my practical reason. Like it's not to move somewhere and technically not studying and not reaching that goal mm -hmm. has no real impact on mm -hmm. me time wise. But like, I know that I want to watch movies and read books and stuff. Yeah. So maybe like reading something and being like, I can understand so much of this, but not as much as I want to might motivate me to go yeah. and learn more or like thinking about books or movies that I want to be able to enjoy. For me, in the assumptions video, I mentioned that I have a lot of like friends that speak Korean because mm -hmm. they're native mm -hmm. Koreans and a lot of them don't speak English. Mm -hmm. So to me, like before the grad school thing, it was like, I just want to be able to communicate with them better. Yeah. Like I remember when I left Korea from studying abroad, I had actually like made promises to those friends be like okay when I come back whenever that is I will be better at Korean mm -hmm. and so that was my goal for the longest time because I knew I wanted to go after I graduated like on a trip and I was gonna see them and I was like I'm about to be it like I don't want to be a liar so you can fake that too I, that's the other way that I motivate myself is mm -hmm. scheduling italki lessons <gasps> because True. I feel like I if I am meeting with a tutor in like two weeks I feel like I can't not do anything for those two weeks I feel like I have to prepare feel guilty yeah because they're like did you study yeah or even just like I want to like be able to like talk about new things with my tutor. Yeah. I really want to show them that I'm working on learning the language and like, You're again, they won't be upset if I don't, don't. do yeah. it and there's no real consequences, but like it gives me, I think a little bit of discipline if I know I have something coming accountability. up. Yeah, it's the accountability. So like you can kind of fake that like, I've promised my friends kind of thing. If you yeah. like find a tutor, tutor or a friend to be like, I want to practice with you because you feel like you have to be better next time you talk yeah. to them. Yeah, for sure. When did you start using italki? Or I guess in general, when should someone start using italki? Mm. Yeah, it's different for me for each of my languages actually. Mm -hmm. I would say in general, I like to start speaking classes and practicing conversation once I'm at like a, at least like A1, A2 kind of level. And okay. that's even kind of early on. Like I just need to have at least a, kind of foundation I need to be able to speak at least a little bit mm -hmm. otherwise I just feel like it's 
um, not the most effective thing for me. I know a lot of people like to start speaking day one, but for me, I feel like unless I have enough to speak with a little bit, I don't feel like yeah. I get as much out of it. The only exception is like with Bulgarian, I have been meeting with a tutor weekly mm -hmm. for an hour, but they're very structured lessons. So we're working through a textbook um, and like I'm doing grammar drills, um, but verbally, so that way he can kind of correct them and explain grammar to me and help mm -hmm. me with that. And I don't usually do that. Uh -huh. um, usually it's more speaking or like I use structured lessons for my Spanish where we do go over grammar, but yeah. like it's a mix and the whole lesson is in Spanish. So I'm practicing speaking, even if I'm yeah. asking for help with that grammar point, I'm yes. asking like, wait, I don't understand how to do this or this, but I use this in Spanish and that's not the case in Bulgarian. I don't have as many languages as mm -hmm. I have one. <laughs> so for Korean, I started taking classes about a year ago. So I would say I was already like mid intermediate mm -hmm. and I'm saying mid intermediate cause I wasn't fresh to be intermediate. Like I'd already been in intermediate for a few years, mm -hmm. but I was still using like that low slash mid intermediate like resources. Yeah. So that's when I started taking classes, but even then I took them because I was preparing for the topic and I needed help. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because I felt like I needed classes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or I wanted to like specifically work on my speaking, mm -hmm. which now that I take classes, I do use them more. Like now they're my main resource. Mm -hmm. And so I take classes that are specific to speaking and I take like structured classes where we work through a textbook and stuff. And it's been extremely helpful and that's why I keep taking classes. Yeah, like I think yeah. we said that in the assumptions video too, yeah. where we were like, Oh yeah, <laughs> just throwing money at like italki. Um, but I think it really depends on what you want. Mm -hmm. Having a teacher can help you progress a lot more quickly if you're willing to take classes regularly because they are like one-on-one, -on -one, or at least for italki specifically, yeah. they're like one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. So you quickly figure out what you do and don't know. The mm -hmm. teacher is able to address those immediately, mm -hmm. but I don't think you have to start off as a beginner either. Test the waters. If you're just a beginner, like there's so much you can do on your own. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to save money, you can do that. And then once you're ready to start speaking and by ready, I mean, you're ready to take that step. There's not really like a level you need to be at to start mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. on speaking. But when you're ready to take that step, you can book italki classes. Or if you start to feel like it's too overwhelming to figure out what you should study, mm -hmm. you can get a teacher. Cause I like that about my classes. I don't have to go in with a game plan. She has the game plan. That's one thing I like for Bulgarian too, is because like, like resources are so limited. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure I own like every Bulgarian book that could be available and helpful to me, like in this tiny mm -hmm. little thing. Like there are of course a few more Bulgarian textbooks, but not like the only ones I see recommended are like pretty much the ones that I own. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really hard to find stuff and really hard to find things that are worded in a helpful way mm -hmm. and just really hard to put structure to my learning yeah. and figure out what I need next and how to improve in advance and having my tutor have mm -hmm. planned out and yes. have textbooks that he has access to because they're only in Bulgarian and only available yeah. in Bulgaria is super helpful and having him yeah. know like you should work on this next because it will unlock this many things that yeah. you will be able to kind of talk about yeah how do you break the habit of studying academically and study more in context assume academically means in a classroom yeah I or i was thinking since like it's compared to in context like using things like textbooks and flashcards mm. and like traditional like study methods as opposed to like watching things or reading things and learning in that way okay if we assume that's what you meant the the only like in context learning i do which isn't even that often is through hello talk like conversational i'll pick up like grammar structures mm -hmm. like once we get past that like hi my name is da 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 like each person uses has like a different way of speaking like, even mm -hmm. though it's over text mm -hmm. so they'll use different grammar structures so for example my last last like person that i talk to regularly i guess like they would use the same set of grammar structures and they were all structures that I knew, mm -hmm. but I rarely used myself. Yeah. So seeing them use them over and over again in different situations helped me learn a lot. And then just the words based on our conversations, like uh, they were a nursing, they are, they are a nursing student. So they would tell me about like their classwork and stuff. So I was learning a lot of words that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then the only other way I'd say that I learned through native content is like with dramas, which I don't even watch. 
Korean like programs that often, but mm -hmm. I can pick up a lot of words from dramas now that I understand the majority of the drama without like mm -hmm. subtitles. Mm -hmm. So when there's like one word that I don't know, I can easily look it up mm -hmm. and then I'll hear it again, usually. Mm -hmm. I feel like I might be able to help. So I, my like approach as of the last, I don't know, few years, but especially this year has been once I reach like kind of a more intermediate level, I'm kind of moving away from using textbooks because mm -hmm. I found that it was a struggle to find a textbook that was actually helpful to me at an intermediate level okay, in yeah. the romance languages. I feel like in Korean, there seems to be a lot more maybe because of the topic levels and yeah. having books designed for that. Mm -hmm. And I guess I could get like CE of R level textbooks and maybe I'll try that at some point. But at the moment, what I've been doing is just kind of switching over to just using the languages and learning that yeah. way. And then structuring my learning in terms of like looking at what I run into problems with. Like mm -hmm. when I'm speaking, where are the gaps in my vocabulary? When I'm reading, what do I have to look up? When mm -hmm. I'm watching TV, where are my issues? And kind of addressing those. And I do think that it's a habit to break because I feel like sometimes I feel really guilty or feel like I'm not progressing as much when I'm doing that because oh, yeah. I'm so used to, I think, just having that kind of academic outlook and being mm -hmm. like, I'm reading all these books in German, but I'm not studying German. So mm -hmm. I'm not progressing fast enough or whatever, even though I'm learning a lot of words through mm -hmm. reading and I'm improving my reading speed and all that, yeah. um, I can feel like I'm not doing as much. So that's why I'd say like addressing what you're still struggling with helps because then you can kind of look up those words or practice talking about those things or reading about those things and kind of yeah. get that progress in other ways. Um, yeah, I would say if you're gonna like learn with native content, make sure it's all within like the same like topic, mm -hmm. like do topic based mm -hmm. learning so that at least you're hearing that same, those same, that same vocabulary and potentially the same grammar structures used over and over again. What's the hardest thing about learning a language or what's the hardest part about it? I feel like this was probably supposed to be like a general language thing, <laughs> yeah. but like I feel like it's hard to say a general thing because I think it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. But for me, like on a very specific level, like grammar, like I feel like learning vocabulary is pretty easy for me. Mm -hmm. It tends to stick in my head pretty quickly. Um, Bulgarian, I'm having a little bit more trouble with that, but in general, mm -hmm. vocabulary comes pretty easily to me. I can mm -hmm. kind of see things a few times, use things a few times, and I feel like I'm comfortable with it. But grammar is not that. I have to do hundreds and hundreds of drills and then mm -hmm. that starts to feel comfortable, but I still make mistakes and I have to continue to work that out and to do more drills, yeah. whether it's just not necessarily drills, but using it in speech and I'm counting that as a drill because it's using it over and over again mm -hmm. or like actual drills. Um, but I definitely find grammar a lot more difficult to yeah. understand and then to, especially to use correctly. I don't think, like for Korean, I don't think there's a area that I would say is like the most mm -hmm. difficult. So I would say in general, like maybe just for people in general is like just being consistent and well, keep yeah. going. Cause I, f I feel like the reason that it's so hard to find intermediate and advanced textbooks or just resources in general is because so many people quit yeah at the I beginner so level and i don't think it's not that they aren't capable it's just mm -hmm. they either run into certain obstacles or challenges and they don't want to keep going or like i don't know they just stop i think it's like that with all hobbies like yeah you get into it and i think a lot of the problem is people like feel bad when they're not really good at something really quickly that too, yes. and like i'm saying people but like i am people also <laughs> Like I will yeah. start, like languages I think now, I understand that when I start learning a language, I'm gonna be bad at it. And probably mm -hmm. even as I continue, I'm gonna be bad at it at times and bad mm -hmm. at certain things. Mm -hmm. The other hardest part for me, pronunciation. Still, pronunciation. I, I pronounce things like I'm from the United States in languages that I have studied for a very, very long time. It's just really difficult for me to make those sounds. How do you organize what specifically to study in a month? I don't, I don't, plan like that like since italki is my main resource and like i said i don't plan anything mm -hmm. my teacher mm -hmm. does everything i mean and we're working through a book so it's not like she has to really plan plan mm -hmm. i would say the most planning i do is like okay this month which i don't even do months i usually do like quarters or something yeah. like this 
quarter, let's say, I want to focus on speaking. And I'll tell my teacher that, like, okay, I want to work on speaking. So she'll kind of adjust the lessons, I guess you could say, to focus more on speaking. So we might skip some of the writing exercises, but that's only so that we can do or spend more time speaking. Yeah, I don't plan months so much either. Like same for me, I plan yearly and then I break that down into quarters. Um, yeah. I plan quarterly and I do then like in my life, I also plan for months and like just weeks and mm -hmm. then daily to-do lists. Um, so I have all those kind of like tiers of planning, but like for months, I would say I'm not specifically picking out things to study. Yeah. It's more so like as I'm making my month goals for my life, I'm considering my language goals yeah. and I'm thinking about like, I don't know if my quarterly goal is like, I want to, I don't know, finish a textbook. Like mm -hmm. then that month, maybe I'll set out to go through a certain number of chapters or whatever, or maybe I know that this month I want to get much more comfortable talking about my job in the language yeah. or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But in that sense, it's really monthly just because I sometimes learn concepts faster and sometimes I learn them slower. So it's hard to plan for like a month. I usually more so I'm like, okay, now yeah. I really wanna focus on being able to talk about these types of things or read about these types mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. And so I'll work on that and maybe it takes me a week and then I move on to the next thing. Maybe it takes me a month to kind of feel comfortable doing those things. So the last question is a little bit hard, or at least I think it's a little hard. And that is why can I understand more than I can speak? I guess like two things, but they're kind of the same thing. And that's yeah. like your passive vocabulary is bigger than your active vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And sure. then the other thing that I was going to say is kind of the same thing slash how to fix that. And it's that you haven't practiced speaking as much as you've practiced reading or listening or just seeing the words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say like my Korean comprehension, like I can understand a drama, mm -hmm. but I cannot speak like people in a drama. Mm -hmm. Like for example, I like, okay, if you look at your textbook, like your English textbook for whatever kind of school level you're in, you don't talk like that. Yeah. You don't, like you can read it, you understand it, but you don't talk like that. Or I guess, for example, like presenters, or even like when you listen to the president talk, like his, mm -hmm. when he gives a presidential address, we all understand what he's saying, but I can't talk like that. Like my, I don't sound as like coherent mm -hmm. as that in my vocabulary. While I know those words, I would never use them myself. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like for language learners, we try to hold ourselves to a higher standard than we do in our native language. Yeah. We're like, if mm -hmm. my le level and all my skills aren't the same, I'm doing something wrong, which I don't think is true. Mm -hmm. But like Abigail was saying, I think you just need to focus more on speaking because the vocab, while you might know it when you hear it, if you need to use it yourself mm -hmm. randomly, it might not come to mind. At yeah. least for me, there are a lot of words like more academic words or political words where if my teacher says them, if I hear them in a drama, if I see them when I'm reading a news article, I know them. Yeah. But if you were to like suddenly like quiz me on the street, I'm I don't know. I don't know. Cause I don't use the word myself. Mm -hmm. Like I don't write it. I don't say it. And even the words that I do write a lot, sometimes when I'm in an italki class, like they don't come out as much like because mm -hmm. now i'm not learning the infinitive or like the dictionary form yeah. of the verb now i'm trying to conjugate it and use grammar on yeah. it so it's like wait let me hold on i need to like calculate this for a moment okay past tense okay plus grammar oh wait this grammar mm -hmm. point can't be used with the past tense and it gets all like Ooh. for me like a lot of it is like i reach a point where i can i know words like if i yeah. do a flashcard like could breeze through it super easily and like, I can read it and I can listen to it and understand it, but like, I just am slower to speak than I would be in my native language. Like I'm kind of thinking of words and there's pauses and it's unnatural mm -hmm. in those ways. And it's just that I haven't done it enough. So it's mm -hmm. just practicing, I yeah. think. Yeah, I know, especially for reading, a lot of it's recognition. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, like there are words that I can read them and be like, foo, 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 foo. But if you ask me to spell it, I'm like, I mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. I've been skimming it and just being like, yep, that's that one word. Yeah. And I'm not looking at all the syllables. Like in English, all the words I can read, I don't know how to spell all of them. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. a horrible speller. So. Yeah. so am I. I think a lot of it is like you said, it's holding ourselves to a different standard. Because I know in English, like 
if you show me like a super technical article, I yeah. won't really know a lot of the words because maybe I haven't studied those that. things. Mm -hmm. So I don't know those words, but if you gave me that in like German or Spanish, I would feel bad about how many words I don't know. Yeah, and it's true. because I just like, I'm like, Ugh, I have such a long way to go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I don't think of it the same way I think of English where it's like, yeah, I don't know those words because I haven't needed to learn them yet. And like yeah. in mm -hmm. another language, like it's so hard to explain, but because I'm learning everything, it feels weird I feel like to, I have to add it to the pile. So, yeah, it feels like it has to also be learned. But like, if I don't learn it in my native language, why do I need to learn it in another yeah. language? Or why am I mad that I don't know those things? Yeah, and I was telling Abigail earlier today, there's one reading textbook that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stop using because the words in that reading book are so specific. It'll mm -hmm. be like really specific words about space or really specific words about like geographical mm -hmm. like landmarks, mm -hmm. like words that I don't need and I don't see myself needing. Like if I were to learn them one day, great. But right yeah. now I don't need those words in yeah. Korean. It's way better for me to learn other words that are more related to everyday life mm -hmm. in Korea. Cause one, I'll actually need those. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I'm not super interested in those words either. Like yeah. one of the words was crater. It's like, okay. The only time I can imagine needing the word crater is in the apocalypse. <laughs> or if I'm watching like a sci-fi movie yeah, and they yeah. use the word crater, but even then I'm not going to be that bothered that I didn't understand the word crater. Yeah. I always forget that. And like, like it's so true. Like even sometimes I'll be like, oh, that's cool. Like now I know the word crater yeah. or whatever, but it is like, I know the word crater in English. That's not one that I don't know. But yeah. if I think about it, I don't know when the last time I said crater was honestly. Yeah. Like yeah. I, if like thinking about it now, I genuinely, it might've been years ago. The last yeah. time I said the word crater Yeah. or used I, it. I don't. So like, do I need to know how to say crater in any of my other languages? No. But now, right now, if I'm thinking about it, am I like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to say crater in these other languages. Like, oh gosh, I have to go learn how to say crater in German. <laughs> like, no, I don't. I'm not going to say it ever. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. But like, yeah. So I think, uh, a, like, just think about what you do need, what you don't need, but also practice speaking more. Yes, yeah, practice speaking, mm -hmm. practice speaking. Practicing your speaking is what helps you get better mm -hmm. at speaking. So that is all the questions that we had for this video, but we did another Q&A or continued the questions on Abigail's channel. So you can check that out. Video's right there, do, do, do. Yeah, we'll see you or I'll see you in the next video. Maybe she'll see you on her side in which we'll see you, we'll both see you. I don't know. I'll see you. You'll see me. You'll all see us. <laughs> we'll yes. never see you. Oh my God. <laughs> Yo, after this, they watched to the end of the video and were like, these two, hate them. Bye-bye. Unsubscribe. <laughs> ah, don't even put that idea in their head. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see you guys later. So, bye-bye, you guys. <laughs>